Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the digestive system and the nutrition. Goals of this lecture are uh, to describe and discuss nutrition and the related processes, various structures in the human digestive system and uh, functions of various parts of the human digestive system, few common diseases associated with the human digestive system. We start with the lecture, nutrition. What is nutrition? Nutrition is the acquiring energy from the environment, converting this energy into the usable form uh, by the organism itself and then assimilating this energy uh, into its body for, its, uh, for performing its various functions or uh, making its own structures and then um, eliminating the remains. So, uh, the process of nutrition and digestion starts from acquiring energy. Acquiring energy from the environment is a property of living organisms and this is one of the two major properties of living organisms that they acquire energy from the environment and then they utilize that energy for their own processes by converting it into a chemical form of energy or we can say the biochemical form of energy which is usable by the organism. There are various types of strategies uh, that organisms um, uh, assume or adopt to acquire energy from the environment. There are two major categorizations of uh, organisms as we know, the plants and the animals. Plants are the organisms that acquire energy from sunlight and make their own uh, carbohydrates uh, or we can say their own food by themselves and also produces energy from sunlight. We call them producers, that is they can make their own food by themselves. They comes at the first level of the food chain. The animals on the other hand have to acquire energy by either eating plants or eating other animals. Animals sometimes also acquire energy by uh, eating up the dead organic matters, that is the dead organisms, dead living, dead plants for example, the branches of plants, the leaves of plants present on the soil um, or maybe mixed up with the soil, the old uh, dead organic matter. Uh, according to uh, their energy acquiring habit, if they are eating other uh, plants or other animals, we categorize them into different categories. We can call them consumers if they eat up um, the plants or animals. We call them decomposers if they decompose or break up the dead organic matter. So plants, they are producers according to their uh, nutrition, according to their mode of nutrition, their uh, eating habit or, and the animals may be consumers or the decomposers. Many of the microorganisms like bacteria are also decomposers. They also decompose or break down the dead organic matter uh, present in the soil, in water or other places. Now we talk about the various modes of nutrition in animals. There are four major categories of animals according to their modes of nutrition. Animals may be are herbivores, carnivores, omnivores and detritivores. Herbivores. Herbivores are those organisms which eat up um, other the plants. For example, goats, uh, they eat up the uh, leaves of different uh, plants, uh, the buffaloes which eat up the grass and we know that grass is also a plant, um, the cows which also eat up the grass and the plants. The herbivores are those animals which eat up uh, or we which acquire their energy or their food from plants. Then comes the carnivores. Carnivores are the um, uh, organisms which acquire their energy or their food in the form of meat or proteins. We can call them sometimes flesh eaters. They eat up proteins, they eat up other animals. For example, the lion, uh, they eat the deers, they eat the monkeys, they eat other um, animals like uh, cows or buffaloes. The carnivores are those organisms, uh, hence, which eat the meat or the flesh. Then comes the omnivores. These are the third category of animals. Uh, which can eat plants and meat both, like human being, ourselves, we, we are om omnivores. 
we eat meat, we eat uh, various plants like vegetables, we are omnivores. Crows, uh, we have many um, cows and we observe that cows also eat meat and they are also eat the plant material. So crows, they are also omnivores like us. Then there is a category called uh, the detritivores or the decomposers. These are the um, animals that are called the detritivores or the decomposers. These are the animals or the organisms which um, eat up the dead organic matter. For example, the earthworm. Earthworm uh, lives inside the soil, in the upper layer of the soil, and it eat up the dead organic matter. Uh, break it down, um, uh, break down that dead organic matter and produces its food, takes out its food or we can say acquire its energy from that dead organic matter. So there are four modes of nutrition um, in animals, the herbivores, the carnivores, uh, the omnivores and the detritivores. Interestingly, the animals have particular adaptations according to their mode of nutrition. As we know that flesh eaters, uh, the meat eaters have to tear large or big pieces of meat and meat is harder. For example, lions sometimes have to break up the bones of the prey. Uh, sometimes they have to tear bigger, larger parts of the um, flesh. Uh, the herbivores, however, have to um, take uh, the grass, for example, the cows have to eat up the grass and grass is harder to chew. They don't have to tear it, but they have to grind it hardly. So according to their mode of nutrition, animals have different types of teeth. Their dentition, we can say, is different from each other. If we observe the cats around us or if we have a chance to go to a zoo or if we observe the National Geographic, we can observe that the cats and the lions or uh, the um, tigers, they have very large um, conical teeth. Uh, if you look at the diagram, in the second diagram, say canine, these are the specific teeth which are modified in the carnivores. These are very hard and long. नजराते हैं इनको हम के नाइन कहते हैं इनका फंक्शन ये है कि गोश्त के पीसेस को चीप हार्ड करना तोड़ना दिस इज़ द रीज़न दैट दिस लाइंस एंड द कैट्स दे डू हैव लॉन्ग के नाइन यू कैन सी एट द फर्स्ट द इंसाइजर्स द इंसाइजर्स आर द कटिंग टीथ दोस ऑर्गेनिज्म्स व्हिच हैव टू कट डाउन um, in our cartoon films, we generally observe that the rabbit have two long teeth in front. These are the incisors because they have to cut the carrots and they have to cut other vegetables. These are the cutting teeth. So rabbits, because their habit is to eat the carrots or um, vegetables, they have cutting teeth more advanced. And the others are, we can say, less developed. Um, in the predators, the canines are more highly developed. In those organisms which, who have to chew or grind the hard uh, plants like grass in buffaloes and in horses and in cows, they have their premolars and molars highly developed. We can see in the diagram the other two categories other than incisors and canine, the premolars and molars. The horses, the cows, the buffaloes, they have um, complicated premolars and molars. These premolars and molars have uh, wavy or curved surfaces which help these organisms to grind the hard grasses. So it means that according to the mode of nutrition, organisms have different types of teeth. There are other uh, different adaptations in organisms. Uh, mouth parts are very important according to the mode of nutrition. We know that frog, for example, have a very long tongue and this tongue is inverted, that is um, it is, attached, it is attached on the base and then it goes inside out uh, because and it is sticky because uh, the, in, uh, the frogs, they uh, capture the insects and to capture the insects, they need a long tongue and they need a sticky one. When they um, throw their tongue on an um, insect, it is, um, it is due to because the tongue is sticky, it is attached to the tongue and they take it back. Just like that, there are various mammals which have specific types of snouts. 
you may have seen in National Geographic a pangolin. Um, pangolin is also called sometimes a scaly anteater. Uh, it have a long snout. It, as uh, the name says, ant eater. It eats up the ants. Chuntiyo ko khati hai. It have a long snout. It can insert its snout in the ant hole and open it up. And then the ants have to come out and eat, it eats upon them. You can look at uh, uh, a beautiful uh, picture of uh, a macaw, a big uh, parrot. You can see its beak is very hard and long and curved because these parrots eat upon different types of fruits and hard nuts. They have to break up the nuts. So they have very hard um, beaks. There are different types of beaks according to the food of the um, organisms. Um, we see uh, that the beak of sparrow is different. Beak of uh, a fish eater bird is very, very long uh, like that of a pelican. And beak of the parrots is, uh, is different. Beak of um, um, some other bird, uh, which is, uh, for example, a kingfisher, which have to eat fish, is very long because they have to capture fish from the water. So the mouth parts are modified according to the mode of nutrition of the organism. These mouth parts help the organism to acquire the food from the environment.